How you doing? You look like you're you're uh, you're concerned. Me? Yeah. I just got this new app that interfaces with like with my computer that gives me a settings panel for my webcam. Nice. So I can manually set the light levels. There's your cinematographer in you. It's it's all I've ever wanted, man. <laughs> I'm taking so many bad like Zoom meetings where I look awful. So this is better. I mean that you know I'm so pasty. That's my problem. So I can't have like a dark background. My last house, I just had the best like Zoom. I had like this big dining room table to do all this stuff on, and then behind the background was just my library, which was like deep and all the books and stuff. It was a very yeah. calming and had some like depth to it as well. Now the new house got nothing unless I start taking take meetings on the porch with like the mountains in the background. What's up, Pete? Yeah, depth is the thing. Here, we used I to like. Just for a second. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. no worries. I used to like interviews for like crime shows. I had a buddy that was into shooting those shows, and we'd always like get into hotel rooms or whatever and figure out the longest like like yep. part of the hotel room so you can shoot as much depth as possible and then this put like my, flower in the background. This was my old, but it's like this weird lower thing. And I'm like on this little couch. I'm in there guest bedroom. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once the sun goes down, maybe it'll like level out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I can go close the shades, but I'm kind of enjoying that sun mm -hmm. before uh, it gets dark on us. The last gasp of the day. Dana's coming. Mm -mm -mm. Let me just keep on checking. I'm, I'm on my focus is on uh, do not disturb, but I gotta make sure that nobody texts or emails with questions. Hi, Dana. Hello, how's it going? Good to see Good. you. Hi, everybody. I got a nice cup of black tea. Nice. Oh, caffeine at 7 p.m. You're really living dangerously. I know. I don't know if I can make it that long. That's why I had a, <laughs> had a long day. So I needed a little bit of tea to, to go. Hi, Anna. Hi. How you doing? Can't complain. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the uh, the festival of grant applications. It is. Uh, hi, Amen. You got nice light in your house, Pete. Um, I'm just lucky for the moment. I think as soon as the lights go down, I do have a big monitor right here that's white. That's probably helping a lot. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I was just complaining about, I don't know where to have Zoom meetings in my new house yet. Still, the basement is just so not gonna work for me. So I'm in the guest bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have five, that's good. We just need three more. I know Danielle's gonna be late. Um, so hopefully, and then, oh, my, my has COVID. Oh, so, oh no. Yeah. My. So we're right on the edge. I don't know. We have to have eight. So. Didn't did Jesse say he wasn't head. gonna make it? Jesse can't make tonight. Oh, so he's so already included in your calculation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jesse is in my calculation. Tulani is supposed to be here. Um. I know that Danielle's running late, and then my said they're gonna show up, but they they're gonna be sick. Hopefully, they're feeling better now. Um, so Danielle will be sick. I know that she's gonna be here because it'd be tough to have to re meet this. Yeah, quorum is hard when we have not a lot of numbers. Anybody have any questions before everybody shows up? 
Oh, there's uh, Jada, our new member. They're coming. Well, they're, they got a, there's Joel. So her name, they like, uh, Joel likes to be called Jada. And uh, so that's good. One, two, three. We're almost a full Brady Bunch. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Danielle, hopefully my, and then who am I missing? Oh. Hi, Jada. Hi, Jada. <laughs> yeah, maybe, my, maybe my light will help. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah. Garrett, I need you to come over and light me. First off, I think the bunker is a good choice. You just have to like really own it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we can do some introductions while we're waiting for everybody because we need eight. Um, I'll just start off. My name's, I know we haven't, everybody hasn't met each other in person, but my name is Brian Foote. Uh, I am the executive director of Northampton Arts Inc. I'm the director of arts and culture for the city, and I'm also the administrator for the local cultural council known as the Northampton Arts Council. It's a mouthful, but uh, and I try to keep it short and sweet for you know marketing purposes and understanding. But that's kind of what I do. Um, and oh, we got Tulani, excellent. Um, and I love art, and I love people interacting with our any kind of art and telling me about it and smiles and sometimes hard conversations are also good so ask me anything and we'll have a conversation so that's my intro does anybody else want to step in while we're waiting for Danielle to sign on because now we have, have two a, four I have a question okay Anna Okay, so I've been going through those dreams of people, and it's, it was my understanding that the uh, whatever is being uh, um, requested should take place in Northampton and uh, the 0106 to 0106. Yeah, yeah area. Northampton, Florence, and Leeds. Okay. But then there's okay. some flexibility with um, if somebody's having a live stream. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have connections to our area. If sure. it's just somebody in like New York City and they're like, we're going to have a live stream and, uh, you know, people in Northampton are going to watch it, you know, <laughs> just think about how the community impact score and things like that. But there has to be some deep like collaboration, past, mm -hmm. you know, connection with it is for my, th again, this is my perspective. And I think the board can talk about it on a different level. And, um, but we have to wait till eight people are here to, to deliberate anything. Okay. Um, but that's my perspective as an individual. In any case, I have a list of those that are not associated with Northampton. So that's it, good. There's there's a lot of individuals and artists and arts organizations that blanket apply mm -hmm. to a lot of local places um, that have much more different priorities, and uh, we set very specific priorities. Um, and where our, our local cultural council is focused on art. Um, there's also like science and humanities grants. If you, and you can, your local cultural council can pick the priorities of what you want to fund for your, um, for your community. So for, uh, for- In any case, for, I have a list of the people who are not in Northampton. I, I didn't remove the ones that are streamed or, you know, on Zoom or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But because um, I think on some level, we have to apply a process of elimination just to get through. The yes, yes. And then when that, that grant comes up, oh, go ahead, Garrett, your hands up. Try to do the, the thing. Uh, That's good. <laughs> um, I have a procedural question also. Um, mm -hmm. Is there so uh, I, I was originally assigned something like nine of these uh, applications to go through mm -hmm. uh, and then I took over ones that were assigned to Kathy because she can't be here is that, yeah. is that how it is? Kathy okay yep. um so I have 19 um is there a method by which we're going to decide which uh applications we're reviewing today 
versus at the second meeting that we're probably going to have to have? Well, I think that we're going to talk as a group and now we have eight, which is great. So we can do such and, uh, and it's, and I think that we should, from my, my perspective, and again, this, I'm opening this up to the whole council is that we go by like a division or and whoever the presenter is here. Cause obviously we can't have Jesse present cause he's not here. So that's gonna be at the next meeting. And then, you know, whatever we decide of, you know, who, who wants to present today, who wants to go first, you know, I would suggest that we do it by visual arts, multimedia, that like that, because then we're all in the same mindset and we're used to the same person and the, the pace and it's easier to have one presenter present one division of art. Hi, Danielle. And then the gel can jump in and, and, or if there's a different method or procedure, we can talk about and do that. Does anybody else have any more questions? Well, my feeling is that we should eliminate first the people who don't uh, fit into the Northampton area. Uh, I also read something about having full funding for whatever project is being presented. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I have a list of those people who ask for full funding for their project and have no support system surrounding them. Mm -hmm. So I, it seems to me that if we narrow the list down a little bit, then we won't have to spend a lot of time uh, on people who won't be considered because of particular mm -hmm. criteria. Does, if that makes sense to anyone else. I mean, yeah, we, we could spend hours on this. Um, um, the way it says, Anna, in our priorities, it says pro projects that are financially financially feasible and have multiple sources of funding. Mm -hmm. um, there is sometimes in the past where we've the project has been so good that we funded it, even though they're just asking us for all the money. So sure. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily delete those out of there because I would let your let that particular score, which would be like feasibility, I would think would be the score that would be most reflected on the ones that asked us for all the money. Um, as opposed to just deleting them, because even though we, 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 as a suggestion to have other sources of funding, sometimes we're the first um, source of funding for anybody to think of and apply to for an arts grant. So I think there have to be, we have to have a little leeway with that particular priority that we have. Likewise, on that note of other sources of funding, um, sometimes, especially with first time applicants, people who are filling out the form may not recognize in the budget section their own contributions to the project. Really skilled grant writers will list out lots of in-kind donations of time, space, resources that they're getting from all the project contributors, but first time applicants may not put that in the budget section and it will take really careful review of the application to determine whether there is feasibility. And sometimes we may be the only source that they're requesting for funding, but they may not be counting their own material supplies, resources, support from a community group or community center in that budget area. Um, so I think it's important that we we, we think about that as well as we're, we're evaluating. So oh, hi everyone, <laughs> it's a, nice to meet so many new faces. Brian, I know we're like really crunched for time, but have we done intros already? Did I, I just, I kind of started it while we're waiting for everybody. Um, okay. I know I definitely want to have uh, another meeting and I think we should uh, set a goal of getting through half of the applications, whether we're eliminating them or going. So at least they'll get to 45 or 44 today. Uh, and then see where we're at least re scoring 44 and then the elimination and then whatever's left, we can you know have other people present at our next meeting that hopefully we can have eight people at. 
just because there, you know, we haven't met, we 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 weren't able to build a meet last time, and having some intros, and also onboarding a lot of new arts council members, and doing these points of order because I know Pete's new, we have Anna's new, Jada's new, and this is their their first, you know, intro to the arts council, and then there's, and it's a hard one because it's our first meeting that we have to look at all these grant applications. So, um, thank you, uh, Anna, Pete. Jada and Garrett. Garrett, you've just been around for a bit, so I don't think you're new. So like, he's J Garrett's been to a couple events that we've had, and um, so these are all new members that are are new to this. And I think just having a being a little soft with ourselves and like maybe not getting through all 87 today is a good way to go, because um, there's going to be a lot of questions. And like, Garrett, Pete, Pete. Anna and Jada, you're very brave. You're jumping in at a, for a difficult meeting and I like applaud the four of you and I we appreciate you so much. Um, so thanks so much for doing this and uh, welcome to the Arts Council. And I, you already heard my little intro, maybe Jada didn't, but maybe she heard a little bit of it. And then if we wanna, Danielle, you wanna go next or Dana or Eamon? Well, I think it'd be really great if we could all go around and just share our names, our pronouns that we use, if you feel comfortable sharing them. Um, and maybe one thing that you're either excited about for your new Arts Council membership, excited about being a part of, or if you've been on the board for a little while, um, something that you've been a part of that you're proud of or excited to get back into, because we've been on a little bit of a hiatus. So would anyone like to start? Garrett, over to you. And then you can popcorn it to the next person. Okay. Uh, I'm Garrett Williams. I'm really, I'm new to Northampton as of 2020. Uh, just a quick backstory. I grew up on the North Shore in Beverly uh, and went to Emerson College for film school and then lived in LA for 10 years and worked in movies and television. Uh, during the pandemic, my wife and I decided that we probably didn't want to raise our two kids in LA. Uh, and so we fled back to what was home for us, the state of Massachusetts. Neither of us is from here, but we sort of like threw darts on a map and we wanted to live in a place where we could maybe have some land and some nature and also, uh, you know, attention on arts and culture. So when I moved here, I was working in a solar company, which is how I met Brian. Um, and he didn't end up getting solar panels from us, but that's cool. Uh, <laughs> and he talked to me about the, the arts council. And it sounded like, you know, something that was part and parcel of that move was sort of becoming a part, a greater part of my local community. Los Angeles is a giant place. And um, I was eager to live in a place where I could like get to know people and start to have an impact in the local cultural scene. So that's where I'm at. That's what I'm excited about. I'm excited to help. And, um, and yeah, uh, that's, that's the story, I guess. Uh, I will gladly popcorn it to, oh, I'm a, I'm a he, him guy. So those are my pronouns. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, I guess. I don't, I don't know who to popcorn it to because I don't know anybody. So. <laughs> I don't want to go next. You can just unmute and go next. Hi, I'm unmuted already, so. My name is Joella Tarbudden hyphen Springfield, also known as Jada. I answer a lot of different names. I'm an actress and anytime I'm in a character, I'm that character until I'm the next character. But um, I uh, lived in Northampton on and off for uh, since the early nineties. And I'm originally from Texas. And uh, as I said, I'm a artist. I've been touring a one woman show on an amazing woman named Ida B. Wells Barnett. but do skits. I love Lucy. I just don't sing. And so the mayor asked me to be in this group. And I was like, well, why? I'm an artist. I thought you guys were sculptures and stuff. And so I'm excited, but nervous. I went through these things here and, you know, good to be here. Thank you for being here. We love artists. We and need artists. All right, Peter, now I want to embarrass you. Uh, my name is Pete Olson. I go by he, him. I've been in Northampton for about 17, no, 15 years. 
Um, we used to live over on Ryan Road near uh, Ryan Road School. And now we live much closer to downtown. And it's really nice to live in the, the downtown area. Um, I wanted to become more involved in the art scene of downtown. I have a degree in fine arts. I went to University of New Mexico for sculpture and photography and ceramics. So I do a lot of those things whenever I get a chance. Um, and I will popcorn. I don't know, this is a new Zoom thing that you popcorn something. I'm not yeah. familiar with that term. <laughs> I will pass it off to, uh, I don't know, who, who's the next new person? Anna. Anna can go next. Hi. So, so what does it mean to popcorn? So you know how when kernels of popcorn pop in the bag and they go from one part of the, the bag to the other part of the bag. So Anna, you're in the bottom left part of my screen. You might pass it to Dana, who's in the middle right part of my screen when oh. you're done. Okay. You can pass it to whoever you'd like. Okay. Okay. So I'll pop now. Um, my name is Anna Polesny. Um, I've been many things in my long existence on the planet, and including uh, being an artist, to which I've gotten back um, when all my other things were taken care of. And um, I'm currently working with uh, fiber and uh, with uh, documentary making. And let's see what else. Um, I'm happy to be on the Arts Council. I've been in Northampton for 25 years, but have really not become a member of the community in any significant way, uh, various, uh, due to various family obligations. And now um, as someone uh, who is free of child raising and um, no longer have parents, I can really fully um, do the things that I want to do, which is be involved in the arts and give back to this community that's been so generous uh, with art and with culture and uh, that I hope to become a better part of. I also like working with young people. And um, so here I am happy to contribute. Okay, Pete, pop, where's Pete? Is there a Pete? No, Pete already spoke. So who, who's left? Would you please pop? Oh, you're new as well? Nope, everyone's gonna go. So you can, I'll, I'll go next. How about that? And then I can pass it to somebody else. Um, I'm Danielle. I um, have been on the Arts Council. I don't even know for how long, like not that long, two years, three years. Brian can let us know. Um, and I'm currently acting as the chairperson, which means I call the meetings to order and like remind people of the rules or I'm supposed to, sometimes I forget. Um, and I joined the Arts Council because I, I work in arts and culture. I work in an art museum. I've, I've benefited from free arts programming for my whole life. And I noticed that most of the arts programming that I saw in the world and in, including in Northampton um, really only seemed to, to work for particular groups of people. And I was always seeing the same people at the same events and the same kinds of programming. And I was really inspired by some of the work that Brian was doing around public art in Northampton. Um, and I wanted to get involved to sort of help contribute to change in the arts and cultural sphere, specifically around anti-Black racism, specifically around diversity, equity, and inclusion in the arts. Um, and that has been something that I've been trying to support throughout my time on the council. Um, it's something that I'm still very passionate about. Um, as a council, well, as if you were able to review our, our grant priorities, as a council in the fall, um, a, a group of us passed this new list of priorities, which is really aimed at furthering um, inclusion in the arts space and equity in the arts space. And that means redressing some of the past harm that not only this council has perpetuated, but also the arts and cultural world writ large, right? It's designed by white people for white people. And it takes a lot of work and effort to dismantle some of those systems that are in place. So that's the work that really makes me show up here after like 
a 60 hour work week or a 70 hour work week. That's what drives me to um, be, be part of this group. And I'm very excited that we have some new members. I'm excited to work with you all and like learn what you're passionate about so that we can tap into that as a group um, and get to some grants in a little while. But for now, I will popcorn to Dana. Hello, thanks, Danielle. I really love popcorn. So I will say I'm happy with that as a verb for us. Um, I have been in the, this area for the past few years. I'm a music therapist and a musician, but I was interested in joining the council because I feel very passionately that the arts are critical for public health. And I think when we look at the wellness of a community, a lot of that stems to stems back to the types of arts engagement that people can be involved in. It helps with connection and it helps with a lot of physiological things that individuals experience, helps with education. So I am happy to be a part of this group and I am very excited. This is my first grant round where I'm really actively participating. Last year, I was just an observer, a brand new council member, and I really just loved reading through everybody's application. And the idea of getting to give people some money is very exciting. And I will popcorn it to Tulani. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Tulani Davis. I'm the director of programming of Spectrum and Motion Dance Theater Ensemble. And we are actually, actually celebrating 40 years of making dances, raising dancers, and building community. Um, so I actually commute to Connecticut, which is where Spectrum and Motion is currently residing, but our home has always been, and our first home has been the Pioneer Valley. I was actually, I am a native born and raised here. So I grew up through the school systems and everything else and as a dancer. Um, and now as an adult, I returned home and wanted to, particularly through COVID, especially with racial reckoning and everything else, I wanted to be involved a little bit more in my community, the community that raised me and recognize that the changes that, or the expectations and the experiences I had as a child, uh, particularly through the arts, I wanted to see be a little bit different for the next generation of students and children in our community, because it's important that they get to see someone that looks like me have an opportunity to be welcomed into all spaces. So that's why I'm here. Uh, yeah, so it was actually really funny because I was going through some of the applications and I'm like, that's my second grade teacher that's <laughs> uh, I started that club in high school so <laughs> it'll be fun and I also came on around the same time as Dana so this will be my first time uh, going through grant rounds uh, with the Arts Council oh and that leaves Eamon Hi, I'm Eamon. Um, I've been uh, living in Northampton for about 10 years. I have been on the Art Council for, I think, like three or four years. Um, I am a uh, freelance graphic designer and web developer. I specialize in uh, with working with nonprofits and higher ed institutions. Um, and the thing that, uh, one of the things that I really like about the Art Council are some of the public engagement uh, opportunities that we uh, we do for the community like uh, one of my favorites is the salsa in the park in the summer you know things like that that uh, people enjoy to do and bring people into town um, I'm all for thanks so much everyone it's really wonderful to have you I know we have a long night ahead of us um, but before we get started I'm gonna just share our meeting norms in the chat this is something that the council voted on as, as guidelines for how we do business with one another. Um, and since we have some new folks, I do think it's important to start there. I'm gonna read those and I encourage you to follow along. And if you have questions, please do ask. Um, but I think it's important for us to all kind of be on the same page about how we're gonna operate tonight. Um, so, it's really important for us to use I statements. We are gonna be speaking on behalf of other grants, but when we're giving opinions or making comments and 
giving feedback about grants or about anything we do. We want to speak from our own experiences and perspectives and not speak for other people or groups, even if we're part of those groups. Um, we want to assume good intentions. So we're all kind of new to each other, but um, here because we share like common vision values and, and love of the arts, um, we want to recognize at the same time our own personal privileges and biases as we operate in this space. If something goes wrong and there's a problem, um, we wanna make sure we're calling people in. And if we're assuming good intentions, then we wanna call people in rather than call them out. Um, it's important to point out problems and talk to each other about those problems, but we wanna do so in ways that are gonna empower us to come up with solutions together. Um, wanna to think about the difference between intention and impact. You might say something that doesn't land well with someone, and even if you didn't intend to hurt them, the impact might be hurtful. Um, so it's important to, if there is a impact, negative impact, you think about accepting responsibility for that, apologizing and making a commitment to do better. And actually we do have to do a little, I forgot, I don't know if we did this at the top, Brian, we, we named the, the intention of doing a little bit of a moment of silence and I'm remembering this as we go to the, as I look at this, how to apologize document, which is um, something that was uh, written and, and uh, proposed by a, a council member who passed away since our last meeting. And we will honor him before we dive into, um, before we dive into looking at grants. And that's uh, Kent Alexander. Um, we wanna lean into discomfort. If something feels hurtful or uncomfortable, we wanna look at that as an opportunity for growth and reflect, you don't just have to respond, talk about it in the meeting, we wanna spend time on our own um, feeling those feelings. Um, we wanna make sure that we're, this is important and essential, um, respecting people's pronouns and gender identity, um, intentionally or unintentionally getting people's pronouns wrong is not acceptable. Um, we, we need to be on the same page about that, especially as we review grants um, from, from members of our community. Um, if you're not sure of someone's pronouns, it's okay to default today, which is a gender inclusive pronoun. And if, if this, if pronouns are like new to anyone, we can always, I'm happy to have a conversation offline and share more resources about um, how, how that plays out. Um, we wanna remember in general that stories stay and lessons leave. All of our meetings are public and recorded, but um, in conversations with folks, um, we wanna respect confidentiality and personal stories. Um, especially in one-on-one -on -one conversations, just be mindful of that. We wanna stay open to feedback. If someone does call you in, uh, consider it a gift and a learning opportunity. Um, we wanna be mindful of airtime. I know I'm talking a lot. Um, I'm gonna stop talking soon, but if you feel like you're taking up a lot of space, maybe hold back and pass the mic. You can always popcorn and say, I want a popcorn and hear from so-and-so, um, someone else in the room. Um, and we wanna set clear boundaries and consequences as a team. So we are, we as a group here are responsible for like whether this is a really fun, awesome meeting or a, a slog, right? So what we put in is what we get out. And I think um, we wanna make sure that we're all really intentional about how we show up and how we support each other. And um, I'm committed to this being as pleasant an experience as possible for all of us. And hopefully we get to have some positive impact out in the world too. So, um, so yeah, uh, things to keep in mind. Any questions about any of those? Or anything that people want to add? Okay, so Brian, do you wanna introduce a quick moment of reflection and remembrance? Before we embark on this uh, grant review of all of our arts community members and their interesting ideas to fund, uh, let's have a moment of silence for our uh, comrade who brought a lot to our council and um, was a good friend and a good mentor to all of us. So have a moment of silence.
Thanks, everybody. Um, so I don't know, would anybody like to volunteer to start? And we can do a Q and A. Uh, and I know we have a lot of Google Docs about how to do this, but you know, if you have any questions, any of the experienced council members will be able to help to jump in. But in my experience, um, the most efficient way to do it is for one person to present one category. Uh, you present, then there's three minutes of deliberation. And, but we have to make sure that everybody's on the same grant. So you say grant number, name, project, make sure everybody's synced in and we're gonna have the score sheet in front of us. And I know, go right ahead, go ahead, Joella. Um, I, I, I'm just wondering, just so I can do this more efficiently, when we have the grant and the information, I wanna have it separately so I can see you or do we do it all together? Are you putting it all together? Uh, we're going to be scoring right. like live scoring. So when I have the score sheet that I shared with everybody, there's a pre-score that everybody scores at home. And then as we're presenting grant number one, say, um, everybody's going to score at the same time within, within that deliberation. And I need a sheet to be emailed to me with all those scores that we did together. Because those are the only scores that are going to count. Every time we present a grant, say it's grant number one, the three minutes you know, say I'm presenting it, I finished the three minutes, I'm gonna say, everybody put your scores down, um, the four different scores. And then you're gonna send me a score sheet with your name on it at the end of when we're done with both meetings. So save them, if you wanna send it to me, so I just have it. And then you can send me the next one after the next meeting, but I just need all the final scores. And the only scores are gonna count if, is if you attended the meeting. So right now, Jesse, Jesse's scores are only going to count for the second meeting. Any of the grants that are being reviewed today, none of Jesse's scores are going to count. Uh, who is this, Jesse? He's another board member, Jesse Hassinger. Um, so do we have a volunteer to go first? I think I would like to propose that someone who's presented before go first. I think it would be great. <laughs> uh, Danielle or Eamon, because that's all we got for who's presented before here. I have so, never presented before. All right, so Danielle, you're the only person who's ever presented before, so you should go first. Okay. I can, Brian, can you, are, are we looking, are we gonna do a share screen situation? What are we doing? Yeah, for? I'm gonna make everybody co-host right now. Go ahead, what was that, Dulani? <laughs> So I clearly did not read the directions, right? And I totally put in the scores of the things that I was supposed to read into the thing. Is that okay? Like, Oh, I, I can just, <laughs> I can erase that. That's my main worksheet. So any of those scores, so just copy that work, copy it and make your own copy or use okay. the Excel sheet that I emailed out. It's okay. I, I that's, yeah, I, I don't worry. It's been done before. Okay, great. Um, it's been done before. So I'm gonna make I everybody I, a, go ahead. I knew I knew I couldn't have been the first one to do that. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I Brian, can I present like half? I'm I'm a little bit uh I'm yeah. having a herniated back situation, so I'm a little bit in pain, and I might have to like go off camera and I can listen and I can score, but I need yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So I might whatever whatever you feel That's comfortable okay. with. Okay. okay, I'll go. I'll go since I volunteer as tribute. I'll do it. <laughs> since my scores are already in it. <laughs> now let me uh, go in there and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, you, did you copy that worksheet? Uh, no, it's okay. I will. Let me see. If I'm going to go first, it's fine. Well, I'll deal with it later. I'm Dude. dealing with my iPad and away I, from my computer. Jelani, I can do a few visual arts and then pass it to you. Oh, you there's no time. scores in this sheet. What um, what what sheet are you talking about, Tulani? The score sheet. I totally, put, I, yeah. That's okay, you're supposed to, there's two sets of scores there. You're supposed to put scores in there. Oh, okay, great. So I did listen to the direction. So, all right, I'm gonna just share my screen real quick and I, I kind of, I'm gonna try to explain with the, uh, with what we're talking about here. 
Um, I also know that I was supposed to have 10 and I only reviewed eight based on where my name was. I know that there were probably two and there were a handful that weren't given to anyone. So I could review anything that's not assigned. Well, we can always save that for the next meeting as well. Great. All right, so you see this score sheet we're looking at? Yeah. So I need scores. The scores that you should have filled out right now are gonna be where I have my cursor. See the pre-score section? And then the final score section is what we're scoring now. So say we're gonna do Shirley Griffin's number two pride concert. If I am sitting here and I'm, we're talking about this and I talk about the pride concert and then as you're we're presenting it, you should be putting your scores in um, right here. So merit zero to seven, uh, um, art, uh, what is it? Uh, accessibility and impact goes here. Community impact, what, what's it? Accessibility inclusion, mm -hmm. uh, community impact and feasibility. And it doesn't have to be zero, one, two, three, four. It can be 1.5, 1.7, 3.5. It can be all up and down the decimal system there. So don't feel, penned in by like zero one two three four okay um is there Just any clarify. so we yep. should i have like exported the i downloaded a copy of this so yep. we should be doing it like on our desktop or not like all on the same master right because it's yes lost. everybody Got has it. their in, their own copy and you can have a printout and be just scoring them, but I just need a copy of that at the end so I can average everybody's scores into a final score for the applicants. Um, and the only scores count are the scores that after were presented. This is so much easier in person, people, let me tell you. And <laughs> I'm like over Zoom, doing this meeting over Zoom is like really complicated, but I'm glad any more questions, I'm more than happy to, to, to just, anything else that we need to talk about before we get underway. Um, so is Tulani going first? Is Danielle going first? Where are we gonna start? Eamon, you wanna keep time? No, I don't have the little, the pig clock anymore. So I'll, I'll keep time. Okay, so- I, just, I actually have a quick question. Um, sure, go when, ahead. When uh, people are denied funding for whatever reason, uh, yeah. do we do we give them sort of a, an assessment as to why, or do we just basically say, yeah, yeah, not this I time? I sent an email with like a, a stock like denial reason, but um, some some reasons we can be like there was a lot of applications. Uh, your application against you know eighty six others uh, didn't score as high. Here are some reasons why we here's some here's some ways you can like increase your comp like your competitiveness for the next grant round or you didn't make our meet our priorities or you're not having it in northampton so i'm gonna drop that little um the denial letter into our uh give me one second into our chat right here so everybody can have a better idea of what yeah, I'm I, think, about. I think you actually shared that too. Um, I, yep. I guess I'm just kind of curious, not not so much like whether we do it or, but like, is, is that something that you produce as like the person sort of overseeing the meeting or do we each do it for our own? I'm going to, I'm going to be the catch all for all denials and approvals. And then whoever emails me and says, Hey, you know, I'm going to basically send all that. And I would love you to keep notes on why, like, why we like, if you had an interaction with that person. And then, so if somebody responds, hey, I, I want to know more, I'm going to send them to you, Garrett, if you presented them. Like, as the, the person that dug deep on that particular person's, you know, grant application. So, Understood. Thank also, you. We also used to have a group that worked specifically on grants as a subcommittee, and I'm not sure that we're really sticking to that structure, but... Um, anyone who's like very enthusiastic about supporting artists for the next grant round could let Brian know. And like, I've had many like one-on-one -on -one calls and meetings with artists before they submit, after they submit, after they're approved or rejected to talk about um, how to strengthen their application and to share and explain our criteria, especially because we're using new criteria this, this round. So that'll be really important. 
and I, you know, I know one of our uh, priorities is that we don't fund events that already happened, but in this particular case, we're at fault. So usually the, we're funding, like we usually do all this process in the fall of before the calendar year. So the usually uh, this particular round, we were accepting applications in September and October, it closed. We're supposed to do all of our um, decision-making by December 15th. And then I send out uh, denials then, and then acceptances on um, December 31st. But because we didn't have a quorum, we weren't able to meet. So a lot of events probably already happened. And I just want you to, to keep that in mind that we have to look at those like as they didn't happen basically. So we can fund retroactively in this particular round. Jada. Uh, have we already uh, listed those that weren't completely filled out or do we mark those and send them information now to say this is what you need to, to complete it? Uh, all the applications that we received should be completed or they wouldn't have been accepted by the system. So um, prior to the meeting, this particular meeting, we would have, we should contact applicants yeah. that if you wanted to fill on the, the blanks and strengthen their applications. Are there any more questions before we start reviewing grants? How, how much money is being distributed this time? $19,600. Okay. But let's not worry about money this round, okay? We're worrying about scoring and then we're gonna oh. have two review meetings and then an allocation meeting. That's when we're gonna worry about the money, okay. the allocation meeting. Um, so, any more questions around grant review, grant presentation, uh, special circumstances due to our, you know, our not being able to meet? Are we feeling confident, everybody? Does everybody have no? <laughs> Question of the criteria. Do we want me to drop the criteria into the chat or? Um, yeah, I mean, the scoring are just the, the main criteria. Let's see. Give me a second. All right, who's going first? I'll go first. <laughs> no. Hold on. I think because well, if you uh, want, you can, or I, I'm happy to do a couple. I'm having a hard time getting into the MCC portal to share, and I was working off of paper because of stuff. So if Brian can share, I can go through with my book. I just for some reason can't share How, my. Screen. How's your back? How's your back, Danielle? Um, not good. Not good. <laughs> and I'm okay. not taking the meds until like halfway through this meeting. So, you know, <laughs> we're we're gonna. <laughs> I can also start, <laughs> just to make it more complicated. Okay. Whatever we want. I was just thinking to break the ice, we could start with the humanities category because we don't usually fund those. We're not going to fund any of those. Well, that's what you think, but we read them. Some <laughs> of us read them and found that one of them is miscategorized, I think. Oh, I agree, I agree, I agree with you, Interesting. Nice. Okay. So it's an, like an icebreaker. Um, Good proposal. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> is there a second to the motion? No, we don't have to do that, right? Okay. I agree with you on some of the miscategorization, Garrett. And I think it would be great to start with like something very simple and clear to set an example so that others can follow through. All right, so, what, what number grant do you guys want to review right now? Go ahead, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go, I, it's dance guys. Can't dance. get clear, <laughs> can't get dance. easier. Okay, what number, everybody got their score sheets open. What number application in dance? Uh, okay, we're going to do number 20. I'm just going to go in the order I had them. Uh, number okay. 21. Music 21. Dance. All right. I'm going to log into Smart Simple before you get started, Tulani, and then open up the 
I'll share my screen and I'll open up the um, supplemental materials if there are, are some. Uh, oh, some of, most of them did, but they're, that one particularly was like half a resume and a little bit detailed about the programming that wasn't any more than what's an Apple actual application. Okay, so additional materials. I'll just open it real quick. And I'll share my screen, unless you want to share your screen. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm gonna I share my that. screen and then we can uh, we can start. And then. Should I time myself? I, oh, I got it. Okay. I mean, it's not, I promise I won't take more than the go, three go minutes. For it. No, you're good, so, no, you're good, you're good. So music dance was really just about this, uh, this program that I believe that they come from outside of the city, but have connections across the across the coast, uh, and have personal connections here in the in Northampton, and they want to offer pretty much a dance class to to senior citizens, and yeah, they want to provide a dance class. It's called it's in here. It's called. Um, like hip hop for for seniors, yeah, hip hop dance chair exercise for seniors. Gotcha. I don't think it's a terrible idea. It's not necessarily the most inventive thing, but what they're asking, the amount that they're asking for is a few hundred dollars, and I believe it's the only confusions that wasn't really clear on all the grants that I read was. Uh, like exactly where is the money being spent, but I found that a little less important. Um, but the, the project itself, the project itself I thought was fine. It's a dance class for seniors moved, and we all know science says mobility for elders will help prevent long costs for, you know, yeah, it's for ch chair exercise. Right, hip oh, hip hop dance. Oh. Cool. All right. So everybody go to 21. And we're going to look at 21 hip hop dance chair exercise for seniors. And we're going put to put our scores down. Can you move on to the next one? I'll start timing you. We're doing 22. Okay. Uh, nope. We are going to number 30, concourse. 30, number 30, concourse. Mm -hmm. Does everybody see where we are? I actually found this one pretty interesting. Uh, they seem like a collective group of relatively young adults. Uh, and a couple of elders who are building like a, a group collective of a, but they are doing a, a full, what well, in general terms we call a ballet, right? Where it's a full length featured perform dance performance. And so generally when it's a storyline telling, we just call it a ballet, even if it's not ballet movement. Um, but they're ultimately doing that. They're gonna do it at the social justice, dance theater place where I used to dance when I was like this size. Um, yeah, I thought it was interesting because it's been a long time since I've actually seen a company coming together who either came from the five colleges or came together by other connections. They are doing a small tour along alongside with this. And I think that this is just a great opportunity just to have dance be back in the back in town. That's not bad. Um, so uh, <clears throat> there might be an issue because I was also assigned that one. Um, okay. So no, no. So I'm just saying like, um, I hope I didn't you know, review a whole bunch of them that I wasn't supposed to. Yeah, um, yeah. But also uh, <clears throat> in reaching out to, um, it, um, to the applicant, uh, one of my questions uh, was about, you know, where in Northampton this is going to be taking place. And she wrote back saying that since they weren't sure of the timeline grant review, 
we are doing our performance at Mount Holyoke College in South Hadley. Oh, okay, great. But the performance will serve the Greater Five College area, so it's not taking place in Northampton anymore. Thank you. So that one then should gets next, right? Yeah. And and originally, it, she, originally she was. They were going to be taking place in a couple of locations. Right. I would say that there's no live stream and it's taking place in South Hadley. It is a cool performance. <laughs> yeah. Too, which is, and Barbie does a lot of performances in Northampton. Um, okay. So I guess uh, let your let your scores reflect that on our community impact, or we can just all decide to nix it because it's not taking place in Northampton, which we should do because it's one of our main priorities. So good catch, Amen. It's all good here. Yeah, no problem. All right. So um, next one. Everybody's got their scores down for that one. And is the screen share I'm doing helping every, anybody? Or can anybody does everybody want to look at themselves on or should I keep on doing the screen share thing? Screen share. Okay. Um, which one's which one's next, Tulani? Number 43, the crossing by Tori Lawrence. 43, uh, yep. Now I believe this one is actually taking place in town. It's a film and class that I think she's trying to do it on Holly Street. Um, and it's mostly a film. I don't know if it's necessarily being live streamed. I think that that's probably a question that should be asked. Um, but what was unclear for me about this application was uh, what is the money for? Because it seems like that this project has been going on consistently for a couple of years now. They did it in uh, in California. They taped it in California. And she's kind of like touring the film itself and then giving a community class of some sort as part of like building the connections and wherever the film is going. But it doesn't necessarily say what, they, what she was spending the money on. Yeah, this is also one of the ones where the uh, request for funding is equal to the budget. Um, so it looks like there's, I mean, just from that, it looks like there's no infrastructure um, of other funders. I No, well, in right. this case, she's been funded numerous times for the project. And I think that this is just a component that would be local that she's asking for funding. What's the budget to the ask if we want to talk about money? If she didn't say, but it's, it said that she had been raising funds. Maybe that's not this one. It should be. Oh, no, it was somewhere. It would, it, they, she said that they received money from numerous places already to get it done to yeah. up to this point. And they're selling tickets at a scale for mm -hmm. part of the event. Um, but yeah, her ask was for the full whole cost of the event. She did ask for that. For a couple artist fees, a flight for Tony Pucci or Anthony Pucci. Okay. Um, how will the your adjusted project if the council cannot fund the request? We will do a fundraising campaign. So it's going to happen either way if we fund it or not. There's a um, question that everybody, anybody can read in the budget section. It's like, how will you adjust if you can't give you money? So that kind of tells you the feasibility. Mm -hmm. Does everybody uh, have their scores down? Go, you uh, preparation. Go right ahead. No, no, I was just going to ask. Like, um, I, don't, I don't know how we can figure this out or whatnot, but this is another one that I had down like in the column. It says, I'm doing it, but Talani did it. So I'm just I'm just wondering about like, is there so a way to figure it, out? Yeah, there's a sheet I, there's a sheet that we uh sh um, we shared um the LCC FY 2022 application summary score sheet master and the yes. first tab on that, there's a presenter line. Yes. And your name is next to them. And um Tulani's name is next to this particular one right here. Uh Oh, I'll share I'm that looking at, I saved my own copy of it and I'm looking at my name right next to that one. So that's, I'm just like. Here, I'll send you the most recent um, uh, view of that. 
Amen. And I'm going to tell you now. The next ones I have are 46, 62, 83, 86, and 87. I don't have those. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Amen. I think we, you and I were had split up the music ones. That's what I have. Oh, I so have... Like, I got assigned ones in multiple. I have dance. I've got music. I've got visual arts. I got theater. I've got opera, multidisciplinary. We have, well, uh, uh, you, uh, where did you get your? I saved a copy assignment. of the master. Uh, was it from last fall you were looking at Garrett or something or? No, no, it's me. Was it? <laughs> did you put uh, a Google Doc, Amen? Because did it, I what? Did you download it as it was it a Google Doc and you downloaded it as an Excel? Uh, no, it's a I saved a copy of the LCC FY 2022 applications. It's this one. Is it an Excel or was it a Google Sheet? I've got it open right in front of me in Google Google Sheets. Maybe so it just, I just said, you nudged it or something, you know, like something happened. Yeah, I don't know what happened, Damon, but I'm sorry that that was uh, no, we can no, just no, save no. things. For next, I, I like I I have down in the original email we sent that you're doing all the music ones between you and Dana, and then I also have the the sheet in front of me and the ones that Tulani is presenting are the ones that are, her name is next to, so I'm sorry okay. that this technology has failed us again. <laughs> okay. I can help so, you though, Eamon, if you want to like divide up those the ones that you had for next time. I can if it's a lot to do so many in the in between so we can talk off yeah we can talk about that too up to you okay, okay. brian are you talking because you're muted but I see your lips moving. Yeah. So I just, if you can check your email, Eamon, I just shared I the document there. Okay. Yep. You open that and you have the same data from before that you have that, that Tulani is under in the presenter section. Are there any overlappings of where we ha I have your name on that sheet where you, you did the, you did the, you got ready to present. Uh, hold on. All right. So this one now is there. I mean, I don't know which ones that um, which Tulani has, but um. Yeah, these are all, yeah, so now it's all like in the music group on there. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry what happened. I don't know what happened. You can send me the sheet you were working off. I can try to figure out what version that was or um, how that went down. Okay, well, I mean, just, we can just keep moving on. All right, we'll move on and then we'll have to save half of those musics for the next meeting. We'll figure out who can present those. Um, all right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, you wanna keep on going, Tulani? Yeah, all righty. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, we're on to number 46, the Amherst Ballet masks, the Mask of Zora instead of the Mask of Zorro. It's ultimately like a reimagined version children's ballet based on the Mask of Zorro, but it's gonna start a little brown girl who, who puts on a mask and then at the end discovers that she didn't need the mask to succeed on her challenges. Um, it did not say that there was a venue stated. I, I also think, think that if it's, I also think that this is probably not gonna be in town unless it's at, the Academy of Music, but it does not say where it's being. So if it's from Amherst, I'm assuming it's going to be an Amherst. So.
I mean, it's it's fun because it's got kids, but beyond yeah. that, I didn't find it really. Oh, Brian, you're talking and you're muted. All right, I'm just gonna stay on, stay unmuted. Sounds cool, but it's an Amherst. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> Which number was that? No, I'm sorry, that was number forty-six. Okay, what's the next one? All right, number 62. Uh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I have a question about 46. Um, are there any like kids from Northampton that are part of the program? Or would our funding would our funding like enable those kids to be part of the program at all? It's really just like an Amherst thing that applied to Northampton. Yeah, I, I I just it's like Unless they're like writing specifically like a scholarship for like Northampton students, Danielle, I would say we just move on. Yeah, sometimes they do, but I just wanted to yeah. double check that they're not making that due due diligence. Okay. Uh, away they didn't even mention Northampton. No. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't like stay any location at all. They just talked about the ballet itself. So are we gonna disqualify it or are we scoring it with this in mind? No, it should be I think disqualified. Should it doesn't disqualify. Meet the it it's doesn't out. say anything about Northampton the entire grant. I just looked over it. Great. It's like it's after school. It says Pioneer Valley and Amherst after school program type of thing. So I think there was just a blanket application just to every LCC. And they're not pinpointing our community, so I, I would I would say my opinion would be to move forward. Move on. Move on. All right, number sixty-two. Uh, they call it next. Uh, I ultimately boiled it down to it's like a moment of reflection. These are kind of like elders who've been in the who've been in, the, in our area for many years. Ironically, I recognize some of these names because my mother had them as teachers or as mentors. Um, they ultimately want to do like a reflection of their own stuff and also welcoming in uh, a new artist who is getting their MFA at Smith right now. And it's a dance performance. It'll happen here in town. This is happening at Holly Street, I believe. And yeah, I thought it was pretty cool that it's intergenerational. They want to reflect on the history of the town as well as their own experiences as they are well into their 70s. Okay, number 60. Was there any supplements and materials with that? Uh, it, it was photos of themselves. <laughs> what number was that? Was that 62 you said? 62. Let me just see real quick. Yeah. Give me one second. I'll just we'll just look at it real quick together. I have a visual memory, so it always helps to. So here's sixty two. They helped fund and build that yoga space, put in that sprung floor that's in, uh, that's in Thorns. That was uh, renovated, I believe, probably 15 years ago now. So they've been around. They want to keep moving. Did they pick a date yet between the two options they had? Uh, I think that they would prefer the first one, but I think that they're just waiting for funds. And as older people, I'm, I'm presuming that they're not gonna wanna present in November when COVID's still around. Yeah, I mean, it, it'll still happen if we don't fund it. That's what it says in the, here, mm -hmm. I'll just start putting like uh, quotes in here. I always like to look at there's like one question in the grant applications like how will you adjust a project that the council cannot fund and it tells you tells you that all right you guys want to move along everybody put their scores down we can move on if i'm going too fast for anybody let me know 
And if I'm not clear like enough. what I have to say. Okay, moving on. Yep. All right, number 83. Uh, this one, this one is asking for the full budget. I would actually advocate that we really talk about this, even if we don't fully but run, uh, don't fully budget it, but I, I would vote that we should do this. Um, it's a Megillah and it's pretty much talking about anti-racism and art in the school systems they have. They've already done like a virtual tour of their art exhibits uh, at the J at JFK and then at the high school. Um, and it's pretty much like kids talking about how arts and how their experiences uh, predominantly as children of color are being experienced in school and how art has elevated their opportunities to talk about what is going on in, uh, in their school systems. And they want to present some sort of like moving exhibit that will tour from JFK to the high school and possibly beyond. They have support from like UMass kids, they have support from teachers and faculty and from the general public or the general town. I do think that it's really ambitious, but the fact that they had some sort of already mo like movement on it around at least a component, I think that this is, the feasibility is not great in just the nature of where the state of the world is but I do think that this project is really important. I actually, I would, I would love to like amplify some really key points from the application. This one really stood out to me and I'm in notes about it, but um, I do wanna call people's attention to the fact that the total number of youth served is 1,400. This is operating through our school system. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we think about feasibility, I, I do agree that maybe like the goals are ambitious, but there is a built-in infrastructure of, of educator support. So mm -hmm. I think of that as like, like teachers got this, this isn't just mm -hmm. like someone doing this in their free time. Mm -hmm. Like this is really built into someone's natural workflow and work workload. Mm -hmm. And the project received support from the Northampton education foundation and the Northampton prevention coalition. They've already received $4,000 of additional support. So they're asking for around half. And um, I know it's, I think it's listed as design arts. And I just feel like as someone with a little bit of experience in that sector, like I think their materials look really, really strong. And I think this was one of the best applications that, that, I, I, look, that I looked at. It really stood out to me, so. Yeah, I agree. Out of the ones that I've seen, this is the one that definitely stood out to me the most. Um, also, as a as a kid, I did when I recognized that the, the clubs that started at Soka, um, I think it's great that there's actually a club now at the middle at the middle school level. But I definitely was one of the founding members at the high school, so I would definitely, even if we don't follow through with this, I would definitely be following up with them. They should definitely take yeah. some of the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, put a score down. And we can move on to the next step. What's the next step, Tumani? Thank you for your feedback on that one. That's great. Thank you, you guys. All right, we're down to literally the last two, uh, 86. This one is the roving practices. Um, I'm just gonna be honest, I did not like this one at all. <laughs> hmm. um, I found it a little, this one, particularly on accessibility and uh, and um, on yeah, on accessibility and on impact, I definitely found this one just like it's really missing the mark on what what progress should look like in the town. And I think that as a dancer and the idea of like freelance artists coming together to do some sort of like oh, we're just gonna come together and everyone work on their things and whatever else. It just felt really loose. Um, and just beyond the fact that like, it's that they're doing kind of like a tour of like, oh, we're gonna celebrate and do movement in this space. We're gonna celebrate and do movement in this town and whatever else. I know that they already have support from Holly Street, but I just found it lacking spirit for progress. 
and they are asking for the full budget on this one. I know it's not a lot, but I was also unclear on what it was being used for. As somebody that doesn't really know much about dance performance, can you elaborate a little bit when you say that it misses the mark? Yeah, so this one isn't even about a performance. This is like artists coming together into a room to work on their own projects. And possibly it wasn't even clear if they were getting giving each other feedback on their own artistic lights, on their own skills. I think they were just, we're gonna come together and celebrate this space, which is Holly Street. And we're gonna come to this other town and we're going to do it again over there. But it wasn't, it has no performance. It has nothing that's really involving community outreach. Thank you. Okay, everybody get their scores down. And if you, yeah, if you're if you're new, just you can always ask questions. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we doing eighty seven now? Yes, last one eighty seven. Uh, this one I'm. This one it was it was honestly this one and number eighty three that really. Good stuck out to me. So 87 is the salsa night, uh, salsa back in the parks and everything else. It's longstanding tradition in the uh, in, in Northampton. Really don't have to elaborate on this. It's, it's been here. It's pretty standard. I think what they, what I think, what I would like to see is uh, they, even though that they're longstanding, I think that there's like a uh, a nudge and I want for them to want to be able to grow. But a lot of it has been holding back on their application on just being like, we wanna make sure it's accessible. We know that there's a vibrant community who loves it and whatever else. But I do think that there's some sort of like, they want to out, they, I want them to outgrow and bring in a newer audience as well or a bigger audience that might not know exactly what they are doing. But it's, it's a loved, loved event and community in Northampton. They are asking for the full budget, which I, you know, I think again, it's this, this is also where I think the system uh, goes against people of color and that like, even though that they're asking for the full budget, this is where it's kind of like, we are downplaying our values and understanding how the budget can work to manipulate growth as well, because we want to work so hard on making sure that it is accessible to the community of people that we know uh, more often than not cannot, cannot afford. Um, but other than that feedback, I honestly think that this is something that should not end. Uh, when you say you want it to see it outgrow, like what do you mean? Like you want it to be too big for the space or what do you? Kind of, yeah. I would love for it to be a little bit too big for the space bring in new audiences, possibly do it more often, whereas I think it's almost kind of like a hidden gem in the city. I know that most people know what it is, but it's mm -hmm. kind of like a secular group and it should bloom a little bit more to be welcomed into, into the public. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm working with the, the same producers to, to have them integrate into um, Summer on Strong. Because the one thing I'm worried about is the home, right? Because I, I like I dance also. I go to the different events. I go to Spare Time Bowling Alley. I know McCoy Jamison. We're we're booking Jesus Pizan this summer on a Saturday night in the park. Um, so I'm very familiar with this community, and I'm trying to find them a home. And that's the one thing I think is the weakness of this application. It just says Northampton surrounding areas, and it's just hard to find a venue um, for any artist that's performance to like that is like that pays a good a wage that like you know they can make a back end in the bar or anything because as, as many people that go out to the spare time bowling alley it's you know however big they're, they're they're not they're just getting the space for free they're not making any money to spend their time and energy to to teach and to dj and stuff so um mm -hmm. you know i wish that mccoy reached out to me i could help them with his application made it a lot stronger but uh that's you know i'll talk to him next time i see him but again i'm trying to find them a home um to, to, to do salsa in the middle of the strip. I don't know if has anybody seen Strong Avenue, but the mm -hmm. Strong Avenue is closed from like local burger to East Side Grill. And right down the middle, I'm trying to figure out um, maybe Monday nights to have to host them there. So 
Um, obviously, I'm a big proponent of salsa. We produce salsa in the park. We work with these collaborators. So that's all my piece. I think it's a great um, community. It's been around for a long time in and around Northampton. I think however we can support it, we should do it. Um, so I have that's a my question. Piece. Sure. I'm sorry. I was just thinking, would something like that be beneficial if it came into uh, public housing? Because it's underutilized. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. welcome it. We have a large Latina community and something like yeah. that would be wonderful. So please think about us. We're right next to the senior center. So if they eventually open, but something like that would go over well. And I'm just amazed that this is going on. This is what I like about this group. I get to know what's going on. <laughs> is there is there like a shared space in that um, um, in that housing you're talking about, Jada? Yeah, in the back, uh, uh, it's a big cafeteria. Highland Valley uses it and it's empty, okay. uh, so. I'll talk to McCoy and see if we can convince him to do, to, to do some funding, to like get funding to do some lessons there. And then that's a whole new audience we can bring to all the other events downtown and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good insight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on, okay, the uh, budget, on the note of the budget, Brian, are they getting in-kind support from you and Steve and Pete in terms of production? So and unfortunately, use this, is, this is not, this is not South in the park. McCoy just shows up and is like a volunteer. He's not like our collaborator on this. Okay. McCoy has his own, um, you know, I like I give his name out to everybody in Greenfield, whoever wants to produce salsa, he does stuff at 33 Holly, but our main collaborator is not McCoy. He, he okay. did participate as a volunteer doing like photo film. He like, sometimes he just shows up and teaches, but um, he's not our main collaborator. This is not our salsa in the park Tuesday series, just to make it quite clear. Okay. Um, this is not our Pulaski park series, but this is just supporting salsa because the iron horse is closed right now. And that was like the mainstay of Tuesday Night Salsa for 30 years. When I first moved to Northampton, I used to go to it, you know, when I was like 23. Um, and that's not happening right now. And, at it, you know, they're, they're looking for a home and there's not, like I said, it's hard to find like a good place downtown that serves a drink to go see a good show that supports artists in a way, or even have dancing. Like there's a lot of like, you can go watch music, but the dance floors are few and far between in downtown Northampton right now, which is really sad. We got Bishop's Lounge. Occasionally, Progression has Progression Brewery has music, but like there's nowhere to dance, and it sounds terrible in there. So, I can keep on I can keep on talking about how because I love to dance. So, um, it's just not a lot going on downtown. So we got to make it, you know. And plus, it's like COVID. Nobody wants to go inside and dance. Like that's why I'm excited about dancing outside. People can feel more comfortable. All right, I'm done. We can move on. Let's go. Thank you so much, Tulani. Um, Let's keep salsa. Who wants to go next? In? <laughs> Let's keep no salsa in Northampton. Uh, everybody put your scores down. Uh, Danielle, want to go next because you're back? Thanks. Sure. I'll, I'll go as many as I can. Okay. So let's start with um, number two, um, Monica Aguilar's inclusivity mural. Um, 15088, if you're doing a control F. This project asks for um, $980 to do an inclusion mural, uh, as the artist calls it. There is no inclusivity or inclusion lens to my understanding. Brian, if you could share the image, the artist- I'm still said, looking at it. You said in the number two, are you sure it's number two? Yeah, number two. Yeah, I, that's not what I have either, but I was like, I already messed up the answer. 15088. Okay, 15088. On the spreadsheet, it is number 55, uh, right? Yeah, 55. Okay. Okay. Sorry that's so that. weird. And then in the Wait, thing, yeah. it's number one. I think we're finding our issue here. I mean, I'm looking at the spreadsheet is number. F oh, I probably messed it up or something, or did I like. I'm looking at this. So I'm looking in the, so in the database, the, the online database, uh, uh, Danielle, it's number one. <laughs> okay. And then in our, in our like thing that we made is number 55, which I just exported. So we'll, well, now we're like really working on it. Okay. So it wasn't me. Story? Yay. I don't know. Well, because I, it is, it is 55 on the the spreadsheet, but it is the two I saw in the database itself. So yeah, on the Holy right. Shit. 
crap. So we'll just make sure. Let's use the app ID number right now, then the last five digits of the app ID number. So it's 15088. So okay. in the score sheet, we're looking at number 5515088, Monica Aguilar. I got to figure this out. This is like crazy. I'm sorry. All right. Um, Let's go. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get these up in a second, Danielle. Sorry. It's okay. I can. I mean, I can show you here. It's it's a rainbow and it says no ho, and the intention is to give people a backdrop to take photos for social media, and um, <laughs> the artists. Um, I just want to read from the application. Um, in regards to cultural components, I'm a middle-class white woman. I recognize my privilege in that statement. I am learning, I'm still learning, and I do not claim to be perfect on the topics of race, gender, and social justice as a whole. However, I'm continuing to learn, listen, and speak up every day to try to do better. Um, when asked about the public benefit, um, the response is that murals are an amazing way to brighten up a city and engage the public as they walk. Um, so, I, I sort of struggled to find the community impact, the artistic merit and the accessibility on this application. I also struggled with, there wasn't a, any detailed information about the um, uh, location. There wasn't any, there weren't any letters of support or commitments to a site. Um, this is just the artist didn't really consult the community for feedback on murals. We've gotten mural proposals before when like multiple people are a part of the process, multiple people are a part of the design. This is one person's idea um, and her intention is to give folks a backdrop for pictures um, as stated in this application. So um, this is someone I'd be really interested to like reach out to and encourage to maybe bring more community feedback into their proposal in the future. Um, and I don't know why so, she didn't reach out to me because I, I do, if you want people want to do public art, I was like, it says everywhere, just reach out to me. They she might also, not know. She's also based in Walpole. Okay. So I'm not, it's unclear how this is specific to Northampton or our community. Um, that's, that's my best presentation of what is in this application. Aim, aim and just Google the public art Northampton and look at the like first three hits. Um, just public art just saying, public art Northampton, and it's the first three hits are like all of our website, and it tells exactly how to get in touch with me. So there wasn't even a cursory of Google from this person. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I mean, they might not know, you know, that that those you know those are out there. But I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it sounds like it's the application was not very well, you know, that could have been you know, much more specific. I mean, I think the idea of a mural is great. And I like, you know, the idea of having it for marketing purposes or for the town, I think it's really great. People take the picture. It's in Northampton. Great. Blah, blah, blah. It looks nice, but oh, they didn't really do that great job on the application itself. Yeah. If, um, if it came to us for public art review, I would have major concerns about it. Why? Well, there's the, the number one thing is that you need permission from anybody who owns whatever mural and there's no permission. So feasibility is low, very low because there's no wall. Everybody, they, all the buildings downtown are privately owned. So just, you know, however you feel about it, let your scores reflect it. I just, you know, for anything public art, it, it definitely it the person needs to know the process better and um I, you know intention is great and you know people want to make more public art and i 100 percent support that they just you know need to do a little bit more uh preparation before they're asking for money is my only concern that um 50? all right what's the next one danielle um seven five zero three from mental illness to mental wellness um, seven five zero three okay on my on my score sheet it's number 29 it's carl boldy mm -hmm. okay um uh sorry oh it's not that on my score sheet oh my goodness 
you know, I don't know what people believe, but Mercury goes retrograde tomorrow. So really glad we timed this uh, the way we did. Okay. So, um, <laughs> when I first read this application, I was, I, I paused because um, on the surface, it seems like a lot of money. It's $1,750 and the intention is to serve seven um Ten, seven to 10 individuals, depending on how you read the application. But the purpose is um, visual art making for youth who struggle with mental illness. Um, it's, it's facilitated by a painter. Um, I had some, I, I love the intention. I love the idea of like supporting youth who are struggling with mental illness through art making and um, there were no supplemental materials to show this artist's particular skill set with teaching. There was there wasn't much that indicated their experience supporting youth who are struggling with mental illness. That was a bit of a concern for me. Um, They're really leaning on their own experience with mental illness, but it didn't seem as they they didn't seem to. Um, there are three adult mentors that are interested in working with youth that struggle with mental illness, but like I just did a Corey check and my, I had some concerns about what the experiences, what their concrete work experiences were supporting mentally ill youth. Um, I think that the impact could be high, but, but I, I have some concerns. I don't think we have enough information to really be able to evaluate um, the, the merit, the impact, um, or the feasibility, there wasn't much of a real budget outline. It said that it would be used for um, supplies and marketing. If it's only for ten, for seven youth, I'm, I'm concerned as to why it costs five, $450 to market this project. Um, the, the artist who's applying is asking for a $500 salary for himself, but there's supposedly three other mentors who are not getting paid. And then a, another $800 is meant to go for supplies. And I know art supplies is expensive, but it seems very expensive for seven youth for a workshop. So can you remind us, Danielle, the, was there a facility identified where this would take place or how are the youth qualifying for the program? No, was not. Not identified. Yeah. Or, that, Forbes library. Oh, it's Forbes. Forbes. But yep. so that's still there to me when I read this, I didn't really see criteria of how people are consenting to participate. And yeah, my big concern was there there wasn't a co-facilitator that had therapy credentialing or educational kind of tie-in. And I do think that that's there's inherent risk in that that I have concerns about. Furthermore, this is another one where they are asking for the full budget um, to to the the council to fund the whole thing. Yep. I don't I don't have anything else to add on it. Well, it sounds, sounds like there's not any wild enthusiasm for this one. Uh, yep, let's, well, you know, again, let your score, if you really like this project, let your score reflect that. That's all I say. We can have as much deliberation as you want, but if you think this is a good, a good project, let your score reflect that. Um, what's the next one? I just wanna make sure we're doing the right, we're scoring the right one. Uh, all of your scores, because I know we have a mix up and that's on me and I apologize. So that um, one was 297503, Carl Bowlby. And the next one is um, 15484, Wild and Precious Arts Festival. Now, what is the number that uh, Brian assigned to this? I'll tell 64? you in one second. 64. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, that is multidisciplinary. On, the, on the score sheet is number 64. On the score sheet I have right now, 
on my master score sheet, which I can share everybody like again, I'll just send the link. But this is a locked sheet. Oh man, this is terrible and I'm really sorry. I don't know what happened. But just make sure you're doing the app ID the not the actual number. So it has app ID and it's 15484. Is that correct, Danielle? City Space, Burns, Maxi. And it's number 64. And it's not in Northampton. Yeah, I don't know if that was actually, I don't know. I reviewed that, but I'm not sure if it was actually assigned to me. It was multidisciplinary. Did anyone else review it specifically? I'm happy it's to present. Venue, it's venues in East Hampton. Yeah. So okay. I, think, I think we should okay. just move on, cross it Great. out. It's so we can nix it. <laughs> Mix it, move on, and let's try to, let's just use the app ID. Don't anybody use the number anymore. Focus on the app ID, okay? And again, I'm sorry, Eamon, for confusing you, and I don't know what happened, and I'll get to the, besides Mercury's and retro, retrograde. <laughs> I'm, yeah, we did this before that. Um, Your next so child, you have to name after me. That's the price. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good thing I'm not having another kid. <laughs> <laughs> that plan just got changed. <laughs> yeah. We're not doing it anymore. <laughs> okay. So this is 13802 spray paint workshop. So if anyone's in the Excel sheet, you can do a control F or, or right click F search. And you can type that number in the top right corner. That's how I'm finding these as we go. You can add the number or the name, which is spray paint workshop. Um, I'll share my screen. I'll share my screen so it's easier for people maybe. Here, we're looking at this one right here, everybody. But I, it might not be number four to you. So, because I don't know what happened. What is so, the so it's Ramiro Devaro Comas. No. And this is the number that, see the number in green? I don't know, what is the five hundred? I'm meeting Renato, please wait, okay? 1382, 13802. My ass, you use my money, then ridicule my work all the time. Okay, so um, this project requests um, $2,000 to do a spray paint work. It's, it's two projects in one, which I think made it a little bit of a, an unclear application, um, but two components. So. The first is that there would be a spray paint workshop as part of the public arts festival, or maybe at another um, outdoor public art event since the public arts festival already took place. Um, he did it, it was awesome. Great, um, he did it and it was great. And yeah. it yeah. consisted of, do you, Brian, do you wanna speak to what happened? Uh, Ramiro and Grace, Ramiro Devaro Comas and Grace Lane, they built like a wall with four sides. Um, they collaborated with middle school students and invited them to come and do a curated uh, spray paint workshop on Sunday, Mother's Day, that was focused on Mother's Day themes. Um, they did that for about two hours and it was open to everybody in the public. Uh, Ramiro also did the same uh, uh, same thing at the at the school with along with a mural painting, like last week. Awesome. So this this grant would probably retroactively support the work that happened there, reimburse for some of the expenses that um, the artist incurred. Um, the other half of the application, in addition to requesting support for these um, spray paint workshops and mural workshops for K-12 youth, um, is a, a public screening of a documentary that um, the artist produced called Small Town Big Canvas, an mm. Indiana PA story. And it's the it's a, it's about the impact of public art on a rural town in Western Pennsylvania. So I think there are probably resonances between the way public art and, and spray paint shows up in, in that community and shows up in Northampton. So um, they, and he would also like to do a Q and A after the screening. Um, and it's, it's only 25 minutes long and like appropriate for kids and families. And, and I imagine there would be some art making component um, tied to that as well. Um, I appreciate that um, the artist is thinking about intention here. 
Um, in the application, he says that because Northampton is commissioning more and more public art, it feels really important um, for those commissions to be sustainable. So he's really invested in like teaching the youth how to create and look at and appreciate and be a part of, of street art and, and, and spray paint art um, and understand the impact of public art. So I see that as like a public service that these workshops do not only for the, the art that we commission, but other public art projects that happen in the community. I see it as part of a public education um, that, that is really targeted towards youth, but benefits the entire community. Um, I also love the idea of there being like a documentary component just because people learn in different ways. So there could be hands-on making as well as like visual and oral learning through a documentary. Um, he doesn't say where that would be screened. I'm not sure if, if you have any kind of information about that, Brian, if it's something that would wrap into- uh, The Northampton Center for the Arts. So okay. like the 33 Holly space, they're playing on right there from the Northampton Center for the Arts. Great. So um, yeah, that's that's that. Um, the, the fees are primarily for like fees for the artists. They're asking for a, $500 salary each for Grace and Ramiro. Um, advertising and screening of the documentary is $500 and then materials is $500. So obviously part of it happened without this grant support, but it'd be great to, to compensate the folks who have been doing all this work and, and maybe give them some, some leeway to be able to produce the second part of their proposal, which is around the documentary. And just because so everybody knows that there's a special paint that he uses and it's called smog and what it does it's it's the it's carbon capturing paint so when you paint a mural with it it actually sucks carbon from the atmosphere which is really cool i i didn't know about it until ramiro told me about it but i've been collaborating with ramiro for like every public art festival um and he's been severely underpaid for many years so just uh just a heads up and he's been a great collaborator and like i wouldn't I couldn't have done it without him. And if everybody knows a big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle mural that's in the side of uh, the building on Center Street, that's, he painted that piece. I don't know if you're familiar with that one, but that's about how long it. Does the, how long does the paint capture carbon for? I don't know, it's called smog. I'll send you a link right now to everybody. I just think that's like so cool. Kind of like smog, ar smog armor it's called. Here, I'll put a link in the, the thing. I just think everybody should know about it. Um, you can paint your house with it if you want. Okay, so next one. Next one is um, one two, one, six, seven, um, Olwyn Dowling. One, two, one, six, seven. Yes. Yep. This is one individual artist who is asking for $400. The artist is based in Huntington and is asking for money to go to an artist residency in Virginia. Um, to I think we should contact him and tell him to apply to the BG Go One Fund. Okay. Um, the, okay, so. I believe Olwyn is a woman. All right, sorry. I think I know Olwyn and I know, and I know that they are he, him. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure. Oh, I thought I met this person as well. Never mind. I take that. Oh, really? Well, it doesn't matter. Think, we can just refer to well, them. They, they yeah. should apply. Whoever, whoever, whomever it is, they should apply for the BJ Goodwin Fund, and I will contact them um, when I have time after this grant round. And we should definitely mix it because it's not pertaining to this particular funding source that we have. Okay. Um, but we have other ones. So if anybody has like a a request or has those a friend, we have a specific grant fund that is on the fly application called the BG Goodwin Memorial Grant Fund. And we fund local artists from the area who have a connection to Northampton to go and do things like this outside of our community. So I can send you a link, I'll put it into the, right now, I'll put it into the, um, 
the chat. But in terms of Next score, one. It, well, I, I do want to say like in terms of score stuff, the reason that it wouldn't necessarily qualify is because, well, I mean, I don't know, you could make an argument that it does qualify because they're making the case that the work that they produce will then be exhibited in Northampton after. But so if you want to score it accordingly. This, these or, are event grants. These okay. are event grants and it's not event. It's them okay. going on the guest. It's like a scholarship, which we don't fund. Okay. I, I, I understand your logic, Daniel. I'm not trying to shoot you down and I'm just being a little bit quick because of all the grants we have to do. Okay. But in this particular case, I just think that we have funding for them and this is just not the pool of money for it. Okay. If it was, I need money to go to this workshop and then, cause I'm gonna have this another event in the Center for the Arts or an AP gallery uh, and this workshop's gonna inform this, I would say that would be a better argument for me to, to fund it. But if it's just they, them they going. Do, they do, they say that they're gonna do an exhibition of their work in Northampton in the spring, but there's not much information. There's not supplemental materials. There's not a strong case for it, but they do say that. So in the past, I think we've funded things in similar category. Like what? Um, or whatever. Okay. Great, we can move on. I'm flipping through to the next one. Sorry. No, it's okay. I'm just it's... trying to be very thorough. We're recorded. People might have questions and watch and want to know. Well, I just think that one is like, I definitely think we can give them $400 to go to a residency from the BG, BG Goodwin Fund because I have like $6,000 in it right now. And that's an easy ask, and we can just. Saved okay. all the rest of this money for another one that's much more down the line of this particular thing. Great. So the next one I have is 7833. Um, it's It seems like a capital project request. So I, I don't know if we would automatically disqualify it. It's the YMCA requesting $600 to put in a method by which they would install art for exhibitions. They want to install a hanging structure. So it's What's their budget. Amazing. Um they're asking so, for the, the whole thing. It's just for supplies to install. So in specifically when we have a capital request, we can't fund it wholly only capital request they have to have two-thirds other funding from other sources so yes they, jada go ahead ask a question i didn't know if i disqualify myself because i'm on their board uh you should recuse yourself and you shouldn't talk or you shouldn't score this particular application so thank you so much for letting us know yeah you i definitely didn't know recuse, much about it yeah. i'll recuse you recuse your yeah, recuse from deliberation and do not score this particular app. Thank you, Jada. Maybe the Supreme Court people can do that. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. <laughs> we can go. Don't get us started on politics. It's going to be crazy. Um. <laughs> I will say they do. They don't give a a line item to it, but they um, they say that the YMCA will allocate staff time and resources to the hanging to the installation. But in the application, it does say there are no other sources of cash income. But All right. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. This is one that I had also read and looked at. But uh, so it seemed to me like they were just like apparently they used to before COVID. They used to have monthly art exhibitions and hanging up, and they're just looking to do something that's to do it again, but have it be easier. So it is like as a you know, give us some money so we can buy the supplies, and then it'll just become part of staff time and duty to to do it i looked at but. this as well <clears throat> and i did a similar project for a long time ago for the center for the arts where we looked at systems for hanging things and six hundred dollars isn't even enough so if that's their whole budget i think it's not a good thing for us because depending on the size of the space six hundred dollars isn't going to buy much i mean i think they're asking for like hooks and anchors to just install i think they're them. asking for like professional gallery system for hanging art that's what i read because i mean why ask for hooks and nails like 
picture hanging system hanging rails picture hanging system steel and rod hook i i installed like a cheap kind of version of this uh in city hall <laughs> um and i think that's enough money for it but yeah. i you know it's not like a professional system yeah it's like you know you just put like a bar up and then it's got like a steel rod that comes down and it has like two little um uh kind of like hooks that have like an adjustable knot that you can change the size well that this is my experience which is like a really poor poor one that i put into city hall um but just in specifically i know this one because we only funded like one or two capital projects since i've been part of the arts council when i was a volunteering and they have to have two-thirds funding whether they they, they supplement the two-thirds funding with staff time, they can show that in our budget and we could have did that work before and asked them to, to give us some more information. Um, but I wish it, you know, I was just at the YMCA today. I wish they got a better, go ahead. As, oh, is your, did we get your question? Yeah, yeah, we have to put your hand down, lower hand. Um, so, you know, I, this is an unfortunate, we could have, you know, reached out to the Y and asked if they had some like put in kind with staff time to install it and things like that. And I think it's a good idea that they have, um, but I can, I'll find a link directly to capital projects and let me let's see in okay, our- So this is one we can't do then, right? I don't think so. I just, you know, from my, from my pers you know, the things that we don't fund right off in our priorities is that continuation, operating support not need to replace no it's not in there doesn't have anything about capital projects either but i think that's in the particular like the mcc guidelines and that's where i'm quoting is like this the capital projects have to have two-thirds funding from other places so i think you everybody should score this one because it's in northampton it benefits a lot of northampton people but I, I'm pretty sure about this funding thing, and I'll find the direct quote from the MCC's website about capital and thing. And I think I need to work on um, creating uh, that within our priorities or a link. Um, let me see if I can get that right now. And then we should score it and move on to the next one. And if I'm going too fast, I'm so sorry. LCC here. I have a question. <clears throat> um, I don't know where we are with this, but uh, didn't I read that the, uh, I'm sorry if it's that art of that the uh, uh, pride uh, uh, march or whatever parade was gonna be canceled to the next year? So yeah. those, So do we just scratch that off now or do we what? I'm pretty sure they haven't reached out to the city and, it, and it's it's May already, so. No, I saw it um, in the paper that it was gonna be rescheduled. Oh yeah, next year. that should definitely be canceled then. Okay. Sorry, y'all. I'm having a hard time flipping through my booklet here. Um, I don't. I don't have the specifics in front of me, but the next project is um, Art with Heart. Brian, would you mind just sharing? Um, hey, let me see. Five two five four. Five two five four. Um. And I can't find it in Art my. With horror. I believe it's okay. um, from memory. I'm on it. It was a, can you share it? Yep, absolutely. I'm on it. From memory, it was a project uh, devoted to uh, supporting, using art, um, art making workshops to support folks who are um, experiencing grief and it could be loss of a loved one um, to illness or dealing with having a loved one deal with illness or I think personal illness as well. Um, and it's a subsidiary of, it's a project that's like a subsidiary of Cooley Dickinson Hospital. Um, it's programs that are that are already existing and their, their goal is to add an art workshop to these existing support groups for children and families. It, it seems like it's a small intimate group but extremely high impact. Um, and there was a compelling letter of support, I believe. Um, and staff are are already allocated to do this work through the hospital and it would bring in local artists to facilitate those workshops 
Um, and I, I can't recall the names of the artists, but um, there was sort of like a diversity of experience and um, identities, artists who specifically identify with some of the, the um, issues that you know the folks participating will have gone through. But again, it's facilitated by folks, by practitioners in the hospital who run these um, support groups. So I like the, unlike the one of the previous applications, I think this one does provide structure and support. Um, and I believe there's also a component, uh, an exhibition component, which was also supported by the Center of the Arts. Um, I don't recall the budget or the ask, um, but if we could pull it up and that would be great. They're asking for 1500. Here's the, can you see the project budget? Is it in my screen share? No, we just see the PDF uh, right now. Mm, the <laughs> technology. All right, so I'm gonna stop that share and start a new one, sorry. Uh, there you go. Can we see that now? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the ask is $1,500 from us. And there was support. There is already a little bit of um, financial support built in. We're not, we would not be funding the whole amount. So I don't know if anyone else scored that one and has anything to add. What number is that one again? Um, five two five four app ID five two five four. I think I recuse myself from this one because I do some work with Cooley Dickinson. Okay. Uh, um, Jada. Got on mute. Yes. You are. Uh, did you raise your hand? Or did I miss no. that one? Uh, oh, okay, I'll, I'll lower it. Don't worry. I'll, I'll do it. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Any other questions about this one? Okay, everybody put your scores down. And again, I'm sorry to take extra care and like what particular one you're scoring. Just make sure you get the app ID right on this. Um, do you have any more, Danielle? I do. I'm struggling to find them. There were two from APE. Um, okay, here's one, a photography one. Okay, it's May. Sorry, everyone. May Siva, um, application number 16238. 16238. This is a photography project called. Um, to begin a new, um, I think this one has good intentions. This is a Belchertown based photographer who requested $4,500 um, to do a photography exhibition in Pulaski Park in collaboration with Jewish Family Services of Western Massachusetts. The intention behind the um, project is to um, take photographs and do sort of oral histories of immigrants with the intention of this exhibition being a welcome for uh, refugees from Afghanistan that this organization is helping to settle in the area. Um, it's a very young applicant. I think they're recently out of, I mean, actually I don't know their age, but I think this applicant is recently out of college. And um, yeah, they, they, I think they graduated from Hampshire around 2018 and um, wants to do this, this exhibition and program. And the project is requesting a thousand dollar artist fee for themselves to create the photographs. It's requesting um, $1,300 for um, installation costs, $2,000 for advertising and printing, another $200 for 
printing and then the, the whole they're requesting funding for the whole project. Um, I have some concerns about the feasibility. There isn't much, there's no supplemental materials, there's no like letters of support. I think they have the green light from this foundation to, to work on the project, but they have not secured a venue. I don't think they have like a list of people that they're gonna be interviewing and photographing. At this stage, it really feels more like an idea than a fully fledged plot project. Um, and there's not, it doesn't seem like there's a ton of support built in. I think it's a good idea. And I think it'd be great to see them like hone it a bit and maybe bring in some additional partners um, and flesh it out a bit more. It seems like very grand without too much structure. Um, and I think they also want to do an iteration of this in Amherst. And they applied to both arts councils for funding so they could basically create the project and then do a pop-up in Northampton and a pop-up in Amherst. Yeah, go ahead, Jada. Well, uh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think this, I'm trying to think when the person wrote that and if it was exclusive for Afghan, I didn't know if they were including any of the and I, I, I think, I'm trying to think, didn't we have some, is that from the Afghans that they were relocated here? And I didn't know if it included any uh, uh, Ukrainian, is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah. refugee, or is it just exclusive Afghan? And, um, and, and I'm trying to think when, I didn't know if that was when we pulled out out of there and they were, that was the, what was going on then, or if it was uh, updated to what's going on now too. Things happen so, so fast. I think they're thinking about like immigrants. So the portraits would be of all local immigrants. Yeah, and yeah. The, the intention was to welcome the newest immigrants who are refugees. And I and they specifically called out that this group, this organization is helping to resettle Af um, refugees from Afghanistan. Um, and this was submit in the fall. So it, it was before there was like a major influx of Ukrainian refugees. And I'm not sure if this particular group that they're partnering with, um, the Jewish Family Services of Western Massachusetts organization, I'm not sure if they're helping to resettle refugees from Ukraine, um, or if this is just the application from the fall, it doesn't include that, that content. But again, there are no like supplemental materials that include like a project plan about how to find those immigrants to, to photograph. Are they all coming through? Um, are they all coming through Jewish Family Services of Western Massachusetts? Um, this, this person is an immigrant, came to this country when they were six um, and is like, as a photographer, I think can bring a, a great um, lens to, <laughs> to that project and, and <laughs> the interviews, I think would probably do a really, great job of like leaving their own experience in. So I think it's a great idea. I think they, they just need to build more support. Like I have concerns about the feasibility. Um, so. All right, everybody put your scores down. Let's take a five minute break, bathroom snack, get away from the screen a little bit. I'm gonna set the timer. We'll make it five to 10 minutes. And then, and again, I'm gonna apologize wholeheartedly for this technical glitch that has happened and hopefully we can all get all the scores right. It's just gonna be more work for me and it's gonna be a little bit more work for you right now. So again, I'm sorry about that, but enjoy your break. Um, I'll see How everybody back here. thinking we would go, Brian? Uh, probably till 10, I'm thinking, until everybody uh, starts to peter off. And then I guess we're gonna have to, not uh, peter, huh? <laughs> Um, and then probably gonna have to have two more meetings, I'm guessing, with the rate we're going at this point. So uh, I hope that's gonna be I okay with everybody. More meetings rather than going later. I've been at this all day too, so. Yeah. So I, I, I've, been, I see, I've been literally I can, I can, sitting in this chair since like seven o'clock this morning. I see your visual frustration in the screen and I understand. And I'm hoping we can like take a break till 9.15 and then we can go till 10 and then we can call it. Uh, unless other people no. feel differently, um, well, I can we can call it whenever, but that's the first vote to call it early. So why don't we have a deliberation when Jada's back? 
at 9.15 and we can discuss like how long the meeting will go when everybody's here, okay? Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. All right. 9.15, I'll be back. I can't wait till we can meet in person again because this is a much more fun meeting when everybody's in the same room. You're, you're, uh, you're muted, Anna. And usually there's dinner. And I usually buy dinner for everybody and it's fun. I can't wait. I know. I really can't. I just like public meetings and Zoom is such a, what is the, what is the word I'm looking for? It's like, how can you have public meetings in Zoom? It's what, like what? It's uh, well, public meetings in Zoom is like just two words. Public and Zoom don't really mix to me. It's, the public is like a, a visual, it's like a real space, mm -hmm. not the virtual space. But I guess that's changing. It is changing, but I'll tell you for seniors, it's been great. I mean, I have attended more events on Zoom than I normally would have attended in person simply because you get to a point where you just think oh do i really want to go to this you know? <laughs> <laughs> it means getting in the car and driving it and so um i think for there are cool. parts of the population for whom it's been a real blessing i think one of the lessons like you said is that we try to like with our events that we do now we mm -hmm. do our best to have no north camp and open media there so they can yeah. live stream and have a video of the events because the accessibility goes so yeah yeah so that's yeah. that's something we're keeping in mind that's a lesson we learned during uh yeah COVID is because we every every event for two years we had a live stream and then mm -hmm. we're just we're just gonna, since we know how to do it now we're just gonna keep on doing it because it's just more people can attend right correct yeah yeah and now garrett's gonna be filming all our events correct yeah I, th I think people are now having hybrid meetings too, right? Where there's half, half uh, Zoom and half in person. Just that, like I, I, I heart like I can't really get more, wrap my mind around that, Jada. And uh, I don't know what what organizations are doing that because I'm just trying to take the best approach that the city council does, and they're well, still not meeting in person yet. Well, uh, I don't know if you call it an organization, uh, what is it, Northampton Recovery, they have meetings, and so they'll have it in the room, and then they'll have the big screen, and then people call in for Al-Anon meetings in particular. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, we have to set, we have to satisfy open meeting laws, and I don't know what the best way to do it with the hybrid uh, model. And I, they, they, I know they talked to the mayor about it, and it was like, we would have, we'd basically all meet in a room and we'd have the, 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 the laptops in front of us and we'd be talking to the laptops in the room together, which to me is like, mm. um, so I heard, I, I heard the, what you said before. I'm fine with everything. I had, I, I had it on uh, mute, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay. cool with whatever we do. Uh, well, we'll wait for two lines to get back and then we can deliberate about like how long we want this meeting to go tonight. I do just have a question. Am I to do the theater uh, uh, um, groups? Oh, is that already pre-planned or? <laughs> well, uh, I forgot who is doing theater. I think I, I did a handful of the theater ones, I think. So Garrett already prepped those. But uh, next year, our next grant round, you'll be doing it, which will probably be this fall. So, I, I see your hat is in your in the ring for the theater ones. Excellent. And then uh, that's nice. Hey, Tulani. Um, we wanted P wanted to discuss like how we should, how long we should go tonight, and um, uh, yeah, that. And then I'll zoom out for the next review meeting, but uh uh you know a lot of us have been on zoom a lot today and looking at computer screens and he was just wondering how long we could go to should go tonight and whether we should end sooner rather than later does anybody want to talk about this how is everybody feeling about it i'd rather end sooner i have five handy i just went and like folded the pages so i could get through if we're doing how many we're doing three minutes per app yeah about yeah 
want to power through at least some of the visual arts. Um, I don't feel amazing, but I'm concerned about our ability to schedule eight of us in a room. It feels like a rare opportunity that I would like to take advantage of to the extent that people are able. So I don't want to push anyone beyond a comfort zone, but I do think that it's going to be hard to schedule us. I think we just need to be better about the timing. Um, we, we've been rambling a little bit more than three minutes. Mm -hmm. can, we have a, can we have a timekeeper? <laughs> That's not Brian. Yeah, I can't do, I do both like uh, share screen on the apps and do the timekeeping. But I've been trying to like do it, but you're, that's a good point, Garrett. Um, anybody else want to like just do Danielle's apps and then call it a night and then try to meet again? Or do we want to keep on going? I just want to like, I want to have some kind of, um, you know, general consensus. I'll vote and uh, I think Danielle has probably the best idea. Let's do her five and then probably call it quits. I, the only reason why I'm like actually fully in person is because I actually stayed home. So moving forward, I will more than likely just be calling in, which is also par partially why I decided to go first to make sure that since I was present today, I could present in the best capacity. Um, mm -hmm. with, that, you know, with that being said, you know, I know our times are always, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tight. So I definitely think that we should probably push through a few more and then I know we should probably let our eyes rest. Anybody else? Um, I, just, I have a question or a point. Um, so some of these folks that like I had reached out to, they were like kind of surprised to hear from me just because like, they're like, oh, we haven't heard anything from since I submitted it in like the fall, right? So I don't, is there a way to, because obviously it's going to take a while for us to get a second and maybe a third meeting and then there's the allocation. Should we like just say, hey, we're working through them? Is there a way to just mass email these folks? Or I've emailed just... them four times, Eamon. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know what they're like. Some people just don't check their email or something, but I've definitely been in contact with every applicant uh, over the last like six months at least. Um, with multiple updates on the website and multiple direct emails to the to, to the applicant. So some people maybe go to the junk mail or something, but that's that's uh, again technology uh, failing to come through on its promises for me. So oh yeah, I'll I'll send another update um, again because I don't think we're gonna make the this this May one that I've posted recently. Um, I can also say Brian, I've been. Um, working on a project with Mina, who's not with MCC anymore, but she suggested contacting, uh, is it Lisa Simmons? Yeah. Someone Simmons. Um, and th the money just needs to be spent before the end of the fiscal year. It so does it? That, what Mina's, Mina suggested to me that the money just needs to be sent, sent out before the end of the fiscal year. I got so, it already. So it's, that's good. Great. So we're good. Don't worry about the all that stuff you guys don't have to worry about. Let's just worry about tonight. We'll, I think we should get through Danielle's five apps. We'll call it a night. I'll send out another doodle and then we'll go again and we'll do it the pace we can. Okay. And I'll make sure to reach out, Eamon, to all the applicants again and tell them that we're 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 going, we're not gonna get that done by the end of May. So final last question. Since we're doing grant rounds, does that mean that we don't have any like regular board meetings yeah we okay. can't i'm not i'm i'm like from my perspective was my position i'm prioritizing doing something that we were supposed to do in december and then unless you you feel like the board feels like we we need to like go have a normal meeting because getting eight of us together is you know been proved to be difficult so i'd like rather just really get through the grand round and then we can have like we could have new business again and go back to new business well, what do you, oh, are you, are you worried about something in particular too, Ronnie? No, I was just asking to make sure that that was the, that's the, what you wanted to do as leadership, that that was the case. I, I just think that like, you know, um, that $20,000 that was supposed to be distributed December 31st should be distributed and that artists need the money, right? Or if you feel differently, that's fine. That's where I'm at. And I can be convinced otherwise. I, I think that it makes sense to prioritize in agreement with that. 
I have a lot of like reports to submit and everything revolves around this grant thing and uh, and a lot of things to do for the MCC and like the data arts project and the CIP and all these different things. I can say a lot of more acronyms and it all revolves around this particular thing and I'd like to get it done just to keep us in good standing with the Mass Cultural Council. That's all. I do want to put on folks radar uh, performance 32 mm -hmm. and the renaming process is something that will be coming up and might require a meeting if Brian if there needs oh, to be we're not renaming that before August. like we're not going to get that done before we start marketing Danielle okay. I, I know what I'm so, doing as our like, logo right now is like we're doing a QR code to send more people to get more community input I don't think that's going to work because we're just going to keep it performance for now if everybody's okay. okay with that we, but we get, can't talk about that now it's not enough that's, that's fine that, but that if we need like the question was do we need to have a board meeting and that would be the only thing that i see looming but if the decision is to hold that then that's totally fine then we don't i'm i am in agreement yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't need a board meeting i think the staff is just going to work on that and then we have to have a agenda to discuss that specifically um but let's get through these apps and then we'll call it a night We'll go through Danielle's stuff, call it and I send a doodle poll out and hopefully we can all get together very soon. Okay. Just one quick comment about the doodle poll. I'm yeah. wondering if looking for a four hour stretch is not a little bit ambitious and maybe if sure. it were like two hours uh, that yeah. more people would be able to commit. I, my ambitious yeah. was to like try to get a lot of apps done tonight, but I realized that's okay and I can definitely, my expectations always can be changed. So um, I will definitely do that. We'll do a two hour window next time. Thanks, Anna. I mean, does that feel right to everyone else that that would be more doable? Yeah. I, I think that it is helpful to have like three hours if we can, so we can just get more because we take a little time at the top. Um, Cause also I know going really late is tough, but like after, if it's an evening time, I think it's usually okay for me to clear the evening, but I'm open to whatever is, is good for other people. But it seems like with two more three hour meetings, we can definitely get through what we need to get through. Um, if we go to two hour meetings, I feel like we might need like three of those in, in the next month and a half, which seems trickier. How about this compromise? I'll, I'll send a doodle poll for two hour meeting. And if at the end of two hours, we have the energy to stare at a screen for another hour, we'll do it. We'll have another check in and we'll go forward. Cause you know, there's a lot of new members and like, I, you know, we used to grind it out for five hours and that was what we did. But I'm okay to like to change the things. It's all about what the community can do. Well, let's let's get to work. Let's get this done with, and then we can. Eight four zero five. Okay, here we go. Eight four zero five. The ecological right. selts. Um, there are great. Eight four zero five. Eight four zero five. The ecological self. And if you could show the visuals, Brian, that'd be great. Yeah, and absolutely. I'll try to be quick. It is a project that thinks about the anthro Anthropocene. It is about grief facing climate change. There is art making and a series and demonstrations and a series of conversations about climate change and sustainable art. It is run out of a studio in North Adams as well as ZMAs. Um, the, the budget is requesting support for um, a residency and studio space, materials, printmaking, supplies, um, uh, promotion for the for an exhibition and framing. Um, it's really a supplies based project. The artists involved seem like their I, I think their work is really strong. So in terms of artistic merit for what whatever that's worth, I think the work is strong. They're very thoughtful and intentional about it. There's support from the um, director of ZMAs, Liz Chaflin, um, and. They they say that their audience is anyone who's curious about sustainable art, regardless of artistic ability. I would have liked to see maybe a bit more community involvement. There are a lot of uh, activist groups and and education groups that that think about sustainability um, and the environment that aren't a part of this. It does seem very like insular within the arts community, but um, but there is this attempt to do a public um, opening discussion and demo related to the to the work. 
anyone else have anything to add on that one? So maybe we can look to scoring. Good. Um, Um, next I have, um, number three, five, nine, three, which is a request from Lisa Thompson and APE three, five, nine, three. Okay. Um, this is a curatorial program which in the description, uh, there's language that says that this program is designed to increase access and visibility for emerging and underserved served artists. Um, however, to me, the project seems like it's serving a lot of the same artists and curators that have participated in APE's programming in the past. Um, it is, it also says that it's an opportunity for both emerging and experienced curators to facilitate exhibitions. So they're requesting salaries to bring in three curators to organize a show. Um, APE usually charges people to use the space and participate in shows. And in this case, they would be paying artists and curators or they'd be paying curators and covering transportation costs for artists who are involved, um, which is I think a big step forward for them, but I mean, we would be paying. Yeah, we would be paying. I think it's, it's a big step forward that they are interested in paying their artists and curators or paying their curators, but not their artists to be part of the project. Um, but, and there's a, there's a letter of support from a Smith College intern who's gonna be a part of the project. And um, I, and they also submit, um, supplemental materials of other projects that they've done in the window space. But again, it just, it feels like there's a lot of language about how this is a move to support access and visibility for emerging and underserved artists, but I'm not really seeing the ways in which this project does that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have too much else to, okay. to add. Let's put our scores down and move on to the next one. Thank you. Um, okay. Give everyone a minute for scores. Okay, um, this is a great project, 10748. Um, I, Sorry, what I was the number? 10748, Meg Bandera, Beyond the Pavement. And I'd love to show um, this artist supplemental materials as well. This artist is asking for $300 um, to do a project called Beyond the Pavement. Um, this is a landscape painter who um, creates image, like creates paintings of Massachusetts landscapes. And they are actually, they live on Market Street um, here in Northampton and they have mobility issues and use a wheelchair and have been advocating for more of the trails in and around Northampton to have accessibility paths. And whenever there is an accessibility path, they use it and create art um, to represent those scenes. It's, it's part of a push for um, universal access, universally ex ex accessible trails, but also is a way to give access to the visuals of, of those sites at the end of a hike for folks who can't 
make the hike. So it has benefits not only to folks who are wheelchair bound, but folks who have other issues that would prevent them from going on a long hike or getting out into nature. Could be folks who are mobility impaired, could be folks that have other um, issues, they're homebound or, or hospital bound. Um, and this artist is also immunocompromised. So rather than an in-person exhibition to show this work, um, is very sensitive to what the needs of those folks who can't go and see those sites are, are feeling, is, is asking for, um, the, for us to cover $24 um, access to a 3D art gallery online for folks to be able to, to explore the site, um, closed captioning for um, a talk that the artist would give online about the works on, on view, um, and then materials for, for the work. So they're asking for 14, to create 14 pieces of art, they're asking for $119 for boards. Um, and they're asking for uh, access to Zoom, 15 bucks, and two ads in Valley Arts News. I, they're also helping to self-fund the project. Um, I, I really think this is a fantastic budget, a fantastic application. Accessibility is woven throughout down to closed captioning on the Zoom talk. I found that really impressive. I appreciate the detail um, to all aspects of it. And I think, I think the artist's work is really beautiful. Um, I'd encourage you to take a closer look at their their website and the supplemental materials. I think the art is beautiful and it'll really resonate with folks who, who don't have access to those vistas. Okay, time. Next one. Okay. Next is 14513. Um, it's Resilient Community Arts. Um, one, oh, sorry, that's one, four, five, one, three. After school teen studio arts enrichment support. Yes, so this is an application by Maddie McDougall who runs the Resilient Community Arts um, center in uh the it's in the eastworks building and um they run an after school teen arts program and they're asking specifically for twenty one hundred dollars to fund students from northampton to participate in that project um i've had a couple of informational meetings with maddie um about about the center and these program, this, this after school enrichment program is really, really popular amongst teens. It's a great way to give them something to do after school um, and also like stimulate their creativity. However, one of the biggest barriers is that most teens don't have a way to get to East Hampton, even in East Hampton to get from the school to, um, to the Eastworks building. Um, so really this is uh, an application for, um, transportation costs. So they're asking for $1,500 um, to uh, cover really the court cost of bringing in Northampton students to from school to the center and bringing them to drop off spots within Northampton for them all to go home from. Um, they're asking for reg advertising um, for the exhibition that will come as a result of the work that these teens make. And they're asking for uh, support for a rental for a Northampton arts exhibition so that these students can showcase their work in, in Northampton. Um, the, all of the supplies that are in the center are being used. They're not asking for any funding for that. They're not asking for funding for the staffing of this program. It's a program that already exists. They're just trying to add on a community specific component for Northampton students and give them a place to showcase their work um, at the end of the season. So. Um, I, I think they do amazing work. They're a relatively new organization. And I appreciate that even though they're brand new, they're trying to reach out to Northampton students and make this space accessible for them. Um, I've seen the work that the students create and it's, it's led by real artists who are in Eastworks. It's about bringing student artists into the Eastworks artist community. Um, I think it's a, a really worthy cause. Okay, time. Oh, go ahead, Jada. Okay. You're, you're muted. 
Well, the only thing I was going to ask is that uh, the criteria for some of the students to participate, and from what I could see, it did look like there was some uh, diversity. I think I saw some uh, people of Asian descent, but I was just wondering. So I always think of art. I, it was too expensive for people like me to afford. So I'm wondering, does it have a component for, I don't know, all these words, underrepresented, socioeconomic, you know, youth who probably can, or is it just, you know, AP students? And then maybe they can display some of their arts in the YMCA. <laughs> they they do prioritize. That is a lot. But yeah, that's a good point for accessibility. Danielle, are you stuck? Yeah, I think she just, we just lost her. I actually had a question about the cost as well, because I had written a note that it seems kind of expensive, but then this time reading the application, I saw that it said operational expenses. So are those expenses uh, borne by the people doing the program? Do they actually pay $160 a week? I think that's the cost per participant. But is that the cost to the participant? Um, I'm looking right now, calculating 10 participants per session. Staffing. Yeah. So. To Originally, when I first read that, I assumed that each participant pays $160 a week, but then this time reading it, I was like, oh, maybe that's just what it costs to run the program. Yeah, no, it's what, what is, how does this break down? So this $70,000 divided by 52, 160 a week or, you know, then it breaks it down into summer and stuff. So that's, that's, it's a good cost breakdown per participant, including 10 persons in each section. Okay, here we go. Please note, we do not anticipate to require our teens to pay the full 1920 per week per session. This is the only operational cost per we have projected. Cost will be subservient. Here we go. I found a little quote. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. I don't have to read the whole thing. Nagira, that's, I think that's good detective work, Garrett. Sliding scale from 2% to 90% of the initial cost make the program financially accessible to all. So that I think that answers your question, Jada. They are committed to making the program available to anyone who wants to participate, regardless of their ability to pay. And I know that um, Maddie is, so it's, I think their launch was in October and Maddie is really devoted to building partnerships with schools and works out of Springfield Public Schools, Holyoke Public Schools. The key issue with making sure that this program and the space is accessible to students from all socioeconomic and racial backgrounds is access to transportation because it's in Eastworks and most kids don't have cars, don't have parents who are not working to drive them around. What so- about Um, I. I, it is also oh, the you ever tried it? <laughs> it's not very well, good. I, I very good. well, my daughter's uh, legally blind, so it's what she uses all over the Pioneer Valley, and it is there, and it's very accessible to everyone. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I used to take the bus when I was a kid too, but um, yeah. Uh, Maybe there's safety concerns, but for younger kids or something like that. But yeah, the, let your scores reflect. I think we've deliberated on this grant um, enough. Uh, we can move on and do the next one. Thanks everybody for their input on this. Uh, next, sorry, I'm on my phone. So I hope this works. Um, next is 3071. This is another APE grant. This one is not submit by Lisa Thompson. It is submit by her intern, um, who I believe is a Smith student. 
or a local five college student, I'm not sure. Um, this project um, is to support a new flat file program. Um, this student who's applying has been an intern at APE um, for a few years now and is hoping to provide greater access to flat files. So they want to do um, basically displays of um, 30 to 50 artists from the flat files over a two week exhibition. Um, they are going to allow artists to sell their work for a maximum of $300. Artists will sell the work. APE does get, I think, I'm not sure what the percentage, it does get 30% of sales, um, which would then support the project. Um, they're requesting $300 for marketing and promotion. They're asking for $1,500 of salaries and administrative fees. Um, they list out the administrative work and I'm not sure if that's to pay this intern or to pay Lisa or to pay. The intern's paid by Smith College. Yeah, so I, it's unclear why administrative fees for emailing artists is listed in the budget. Um, they also apparently are asking for money to ship the artwork to collectors, which if it's a, if it's a local show and they're selling things for under $300, I'm not sure. What is a flat file? I'm, 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 I'm sorry, this is a, this is a new vocabulary for me. So flat files are these large, they look like uh, desks or dressers that allow you to store uh, prints and works on paper flat. So you can pull them and look at them, but it's just basically a storage system for um, works on paper. Um, I think it's just their name for this thing. It's their way of indicating that it's 2D works and works on paper, prints, oh, sure. drawings, pastels. Oh, sure. um, it's a little misleading. Um, uh, again, Zoe Sasson is someone who's named as being involved as a curator and art educator. This is another artist. This is a local artist who's done work for APE extensively. I think she's a teacher at Northampton um, High School in the arts. I've, I've full disclosure, have like worked with Zoe. Um, she's very competent in her, her abilities and has like consistently been someone named in every APE grant that we've seen, I think for the last few cycles. Um, and Kathy Couch is also involved in supporting um, the installation and also is like a phenomenal um, lighting and installation expert, but it's unclear to me like whether the budget is specifically paying Zoe and Kathy. I know there's like a curatorial fee, so I'm assuming that yeah. Zoe, um, but there isn't much other community involvement I'm not seeing many other partners. I'm not seeing too much impact beyond the specific group of artists that are, that are showing flat files. I think it's great to show 2D work, but um, I don't have too much else to add. Okay. You're asking for That's about minutes. time. I think the work is great. The work is very great. It's a good okay. it, but all right, let's do the next one. Um, I think that's it for me. Okay. I think that's it for me. Just make sure everybody has their scores in the final score section. I will get a doodle poll out tomorrow for everybody. And we'll have a new meeting, uh, hopefully very soon. Um, thank you for your time, everyone. Uh, how many grants did we get through today? We got Tulani and... Here. That's good. How many did we eliminate based on their location? Oh. We, there were 87 and we have already eliminated a bunch just for location and time. I started at zero and got through quite a few. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't realize I was only supposed to do certain ones. Me too. No, everybody's supposed to read every single grant. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I, I almost... Are... Everybody should be familiar with every single grant. This is just to deliberate about specific things about the grant and give me the final score. Some people are supposed to read more in depth 
the particular category of grants, like uh, visual arts by Danielle and dance by Tulani, for instance, and they're all going to be presenting those those grants for all of us to score. So sure, sure. Okay, okay. that was, didn't come over cross clear in the email. I'm sorry. Um, I think we're doing good. You know, we're on pace. We probably need two more meetings. I'll pick a two hour time for the next one. I have a bunch of ideas uh, and my of times when we can all meet. I'll, I'll put that out tomorrow and then let me know as soon as that I get eight people on a specific time. I'm going to pick that time. And if I get seven, I'm going to just make some calls and beg and plead for you guys to show up. So that's where we're at. Thanks for staying up late and doing this all together. It's all a learning process and um, I'm looking forward to serving our community more. So I'll talk to everyone soon. I'll email you my scores. Uh, yeah, just hold on to them for now. But if you want me to keep them for now, that's good. Okay. Uh, yeah, just hold on to them. Just make sure you have them saved. Um, mm -hmm. All the ones we did. And again, we're not gonna go by the number one, two, one through 87. We're going by app ID now, just because okay. some way I, you know, I probably sorted it wrong or something, or there's multiple versions. So again, I apologize for my technological error, um, but I'm glad that we have a quorum now. Nice to see everyone. Appreciate everyone's input. Uh, if I was a little quick today, I apologize. Um, we're, we're, you know, I'm thinking about the deadline, but we shouldn't, we should just go through this with an open heart and try to get these done. Um, and like, again, reach out to me. Everybody has my mobile number. Any questions, just give me a call. I'll be more than happy to sort things out for you if you need any extra help, okay? Okay. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Thanks Brian. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Danielle, Bye, everyone. Danielle, feel better. All right. Yeah, I feel better. Nice to meet you all.